Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, which is entitled Dhritarashtra Quits Home. Today we are reading the 21st verse of this chapter. Pitra Bhratra Surat Putra Hataste Vigatam Vayam Atma Chajaraya Grastaha Paragaham Upasase. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace. A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Translation Your father, brother, well wishers, and sons are all dead and passed away. You yourself have expended the major portion of your life. Your body is now overtaken by invalidity, and you are living in the home of another. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The king is reminded of his precarious condition influenced by cruel time and by his past experience he should have been more intelligent to see what was going to happen to his own life. His father Vichitravirya died long ago when he and his younger brothers were all little children and it was due to the care and kindness of Bhishma Deva that they were properly brought up. Then again his brother Pandu died also. Then in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, his 100 sons and his grandsons all died along with all other well-wishers like Bhishma Deva, Dronacharya, Karna and many other kings and friends. So he had lost all men and money and now he was living at the mercy of his nephew whom he had put into troubles of various tribes. And despite all these reverses, he thought that he would prolong his life more and more. Vidura wanted to point out to the Trashtra that everyone has to protect himself by his action and the grace of the Lord. One has to execute his duty faithfully depending for the result on the supreme authority. No friend, no children, no father, no brother, no state and no one else can protect a person who is not protected by the Supreme Lord. One should therefore seek the protection of the Supreme Lord for the human form of life is meant for seeking that protection. He was warned of his precarious conditions more and more by the following words. Thus ends the Bhakti Vedanta purport. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurum Meritam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Nitinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gaurabhani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshakarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Srivasani Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So this is a verse spoken by Vidura, specifically addressing Dhritarashtra. 
and Vidura being the beneficiary of his elder brother Dhritarashtra is trying to remind Dhritarashtra of the precarious condition in which Dhritarashtra is now living. He is particularly pointing out that uh, Dhritarashtra has lost his father, had lost his father long, long back when he was just very, very young. He lost his brother because the brother also died untimely and then his well-wishers and sons including his grandsons, are all dead and gone in the battle of Kurukshetra. Then as far as his own personal body is concerned, his body has become old. He is now overtaken by invalidity. <clears throat> when the scriptures say, that old age is one of the fundamental miseries, what should be understood is how is old age a misery? The misery in old age is due to this uh, invalidity. Invalidity means the body no longer works the same way it had been working when a person was young. The uh, senses lose their strength. So sensual strength is reduced. The body becomes weak and there are so many complications that could affect the normal functioning of this body. The digestion becomes weak. In so many ways, the body becomes extremely uh, difficult to live in. So that is exactly what is called as invalidity due to old age. And one more point that Vidura is pointing out to the Trashtra. Don't forget that you are living in another person's home. It's no longer your own home. Why? Because Dhritarashtra was the caretaker king and he was enjoying life in the palace even though he was not eligible to be the king. He was given charge of ruling till after his brother passed away, Pandu passed away and uh, uh, Yudhishthira, the eldest son of Pandu who was the uh, one who was supposed to take charge of ruling, he was not yet a major. He was still very, very young. So, uh, for the uh, time being, Bhishma uh, appointed Dhritarashtra the Kedekar king in the Kuru dynasty. So there was a time when Dhritarashtra was the king, the emperor of the world. But especially after the battle of Kurukshetra, Dhritarashtra lost everything. He lost the kingdom, he lost the, his sons, he lost his well-wishers and therefore he is now living in the house of his nephew Yudhishthira and the Pandavas. Now, uh, Yudhishthira had been very kind to the Trashtra and all the Kauravas. Even now, after the uh, battle of Kurukshetra, Yudhishthira continued to be gracious and kind to his uncle. But what was Dhritarashtra's treatment of the Pandavas when they were under his care. 
that is being pointed out in the purport that Dhritarashtra actually had put the Pandavas into various kinds of troubles when they were living in his care. This was due to Dhritarashtra's uh, ambition to somehow retain the kingdom. Somehow he wanted the Pandavas to be uh, eliminated before they could actually claim the right to uh, the kingdom. So, along with the uh, along with his eldest son Duryodhana, Dhritarashtra planned and plotted to kill the Pandavas in so many ways. And finally, when he was really unsuccessful in retaining his kingdom after the battle of Kurukshetra. He still was hoping somehow to prolong his life and live comfortably at the mercy of Yudhishthira. So this attitude towards uh, life in general and particularly this desire to prolong one's life even after uh, old age has overtaken one's uh, body. This is actually a big mistake uh, that uh, people generally uh, do while living in this world. It is actually a very very precarious condition uh, that people live in this world particularly when they are very very materialistic. Material existence means it is a very precarious condition of existence. The Bhagavad Gita describes material existence as Jiva Bhuta existence. Jiva Bhuta means we the living beings who are completely spiritual by nature we are spirit soul, we are not the body. So our existence should be spiritual existence. But due to our own foolishness of trying to be independent and consequently uh, being forgetful of Krishna and therefore giving up spiritual existence and embracing this material existence, life in the material world, we are simply engaged in a hard struggle for existence. This is described in the Bhagavad Gita in two different places. In the seventh chapter, Krishna says, Apareyam itastu anyam prakritim vidhime param Jiva Bhutam Mahabaho Yayedam Dharyate Jagat. The living being is actually belonging to the superior energy, the spiritual energy. Prakritim Vidhi Me Param, the superior energy, the spiritual energy. Whereas this material world is inferior energy, Apareyam. The material and a, a world consisting of the eight elements made up of gross and subtle matter is inferior energy. Why? Because it lacks consciousness. And the living being is superior energy because by nature living entities are spiritual and spiritual nature means conscious beings. Therefore superior. But one point Krishna makes it very clear Yaya idam dharyate jagat. They are somehow 
living in this world engaged in a struggle for existence they are somehow engaged in survival why why does krishna say this that is explained in the 15th chapter mamai vamsho jeeva loke jeeva bhuta sanatana our original position is that we are a part of krishna amsha and uh, jeeva loke in this world we are in a state of existence called jeeva bhuta existence jeeva bhuta existence means existence within this material world in a material body what does this material body mean uh, मनश्रियाणी प्रकृति स्थानी कर्षती इन द मेटीरियल बॉडी इट्स अ हार्ड स्ट्रगल फॉर एक्सिस्टेंस विथ सिक्स सेंसेस विच इंक्लूड माइंड वी नो द फाइव सेंसेस द आईज इयर्स नोस टंग एंड द सेंस ऑफ टच बट इन एडिशन टू दिस और इन द सेंटर ऑफ ऑल दीज फाइव सेंसेस इज द माइंड and including the mind with these five senses including the mind we are engaged in a hard struggle for existence why is that called a hard struggle for existence because our conception of enjoyment or happiness is that my senses require some favorable uh, sense objects my whole conception of happiness is some favorable sense contact that's the only thing i know as the source of my happiness the source of my enjoyment that is the meaning of material existence i don't know that i am spirit soul i am in ignorance because again this ignorance is a characteristic of this material life material existence forgetfulness of krishna means we forget ourselves we forget krishna we forget our spiritual nature we forget our constitutional position of eternal life full of knowledge full of bliss we are completely forgetful of all these facts about ourselves about krishna about our original spiritual existence in the spiritual world with krishna completely forgetful uh, of all these uh, and because we desire independence we are placed in this illusory world world where the material energy is putting us into one illusion why should material energy put us into illusion because we want to be independent even though our factual position is dependence as part of krishna we are always dependent on krishna and krishna very happily uh, maintains us in a very nice way in the spiritual world with love and care but foolishly desiring independence we uh, are putting ourselves in this material existence out of our own choice not because krishna wants to place us here no krishna does not want we are actually uh, insisting we are very very adamant about uh, our independent so called independent existence but even in this material world krishna is the maintainer of everyone and krishna provides but this material world the whatever is provided is just for some bare minimum maintenance in this material body why this material body because 
this material body gives us a false sense of independence which is not actually our actual position and this uh, feeling that I am independent comes by uh, this um, material body, the material mind, the material intelligence, the material ego, our false identity, I am this body and everything that is connected with this body is mine, I and mine, this sense of uh, uh, false sense of independence, ahamamiti, is the essence of material existence. And in such a state, we are constantly engaged in a struggle. Why struggle? Because uh, having forgotten our spiritual uh, nature, our spiritual existence, in this material existence, we are forced to work even for our basic needs. Contrast this with the spiritual world where nobody has to work, where everything is provided just by your desiring to have something, just by your desire. You can have whatever you want. That is spiritual life, that is spiritual existence. Under the complete loving care of Krishna, who is the Supreme Lord? Who is the Supreme Controller? Who is the Supreme Proprietor of everything? So Krishna has made this uh, arrangement in the spiritual world for all of us. But if we want to be independent, we want to, and that's because primarily we are envious of Krishna. Why should Krishna be the supreme controller? Why should he be the Lord? I want to be the Lord. I want to take Krishna's position. This is the foolishness. Hmm? The, what is my position? I am a very, 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 very tiny, insignificant uh, part of Krishna. So how can a very, very, very tiny part, insignificant part, now, how many such insignificant parts are there who are all parts of Krishna? Millions, billions, countless living beings are there. So, all of them are meant to live with Krishna under Krishna's loving care. That is their actual position, every living being. But foolishly, some living beings, not all, the spiritual world is much, 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 much bigger than the material world. In the spiritual world, there are at least three times greater number of planets than the entire material creation. And even the living beings are many, many, many billions of trillions of zillions of times more than the living beings in this material world. So they are all living as devotees, happily in the spiritual world, very nicely, wonderful a life. But in this material world, it is a life of uh, struggle. Why? Because of this desire to lord over material nature, desire to become the lord of everything I survey. And this Desiring to lord over is not just one person. It is so many of these living beings who are rebellious, who are envious of Krishna, who want to be independent. And there is constant competition between all these envious, rebellious, independent uh, living beings who have turned away from Krishna, who want to remain uh, away from Krishna, who don't want to accept their factual constitutional position, dependence on Krishna and uh, the spiritual life full of bliss and knowledge, eternal life they don't want. So therefore, in this uh, uh, situation, Krishna 
has created this material world with some very peculiar uh, conditions. Why peculiar conditions? The laws of karma, especially. Because Krishna is equal to everyone. Krishna does not favor any one person over another person. He is impartial. Every living being is his own part and parcel. There is no uh, one who is specially favored by Krishna, nor is anybody condemned by the Supreme Lord. Because we all belong to him. There is no question of Krishna condemning anybody. So he provides for everyone. But when I, an individual, insignificant, tiny part of Krishna, want to be the Lord of everyone else, everything else, whereas my position is simply being dependent as a very, very tiny, insignificant jiva. That is my position, living being. But when I desire to be the Lord, then a false sense of Lordship is given by first of all giving a material body which appears to be like an independent unit. I forget my dependent position and in that forgetfulness of my dependent position, I think now I can be independent. When I consider myself as this body, just like this body is a complete working unit and that working unit called the body, full with all senses and all kinds of uh, uh, facilities uh, for living uh, separately, independently, all this arrangement is also possible by the grace of Krishna only, who has entered this body and who is facilitating everything that is uh, working in this body. Even this material body, for it to function, we are not independently able to uh, make this body work. We are totally uh, ignorant about the various arrangements within this body. This Krishna points out in the Bhagavad Gita. Just like we eat some nice food, however, uh, uh, however much we may take care to eat some healthy food or even something which is very relishable, something which is very nice. But ultimately, unless the food is digested, you are going to fall sick. You are going to be uh, having so much of inconvenience. So, who is digesting the food inside your stomach? Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Aham Vaishwanaro Bhutva Praninam Deham Ashrita Pranapana Samayutta Pacham Yatnam Chatur Vidham Krishna says, I digest the food that you eat in your belly by being present in your belly as the fire of digestion, Vaishwanara. This whole body which is like a machine, is functioning because of the pranavayu circulation, the, the life air which is circulating. That life air circulation is due to the presence of Krishna as the super soul, as the Paramatma. And as soon as Paramatma leaves this body, which is what happens in the time of death, the prana also leaves this body. When the prana leaves this body, this body will not function anymore. The eyes we cannot use for seeing, the ears cannot hear. So then, when this body no longer is going to function as a complete system, then even I have to leave the body, I the spirit soul, the resident of this body, I also have to leave the body. You see, how... Uh, we are completely dependent upon Krishna even within this material world, even in this body, which apparently looks like it is independently functioning. So this ignorance, due to this material existence, there is ignorance. Who I am, what is my present condition, what is my material existence, 
how I am dependent, even though I like to be independent, I want to declare that I am independent. But actually the fact is, we are always eternally dependent and always dependent on Krishna, not on anybody else or anything else. It looks like sometimes that we, somebody, somebody may in a sober uh, way consider what is my actual position and may think, oh, I am dependent on so many others. But actually, even those others who may seem to be our uh, well-wishers, people who actually support our life in this world, actually even they are not ultimately independent. It is Krishna only through various instruments is actually maintaining us. Krishna does not directly uh, become visible uh, in our material life, but he is in the background. According to his direction, the whole material uh, world is working. The material nature itself is working according to his direction. And every person is able to function because of Krishna being present in their heart as the super soul. So even if we consider somebody else is helping me, that somebody else is able to help only because of Krishna. So ultimately we are completely dependent on Krishna in any condition of existence. So uh, Vedic wisdom actually advises us, instructs us, gives us this uh, uh, transcendental knowledge that uh, you have to understand your complete dependence on Krishna, total dependence on Krishna. And unless we accept this, we are in ignorance, we are in illusion, we have a false sense of independence. Uh, we uh, have false dependencies, just like um, Dhritarashtra was dependent on uh, the uh, support of uh, uh, his uh, well-wishers, Bhishma, Drona, uh, Karna, even his own sons, he is dependent on his own sons, Duryodhana and his other, uh, his, he had probably 100 sons. Now see his condition, he has lost all of them in this battle of Kurukshetra. Till uh, before the battle of Kurukshetra somehow he could have had some false sense of uh, security in terms of uh, support by all these uh, well-wishers and his sons and grandsons. He had big hopes, oh my son will take over after uh, uh, me. Or even when I retire, I'll have my son ruling uh, as uh, the emperor of this world. But actually, he, he lost his, uh, all his 100 sons, he lost all his grandsons, he lost his well wishes. Now, what is his uh, condition? He's totally uh, dependent, has become totally dependent. But even in this condition, because he had a very kind and uh, gracious uh, nephew, Yudhishthira. Yudhishthira was doing his duty and Yudhishthira was a very uh, uh, merciful, compassionate, kind, uh, well-wisher. So Yudhishthira was uh, doing his duty of giving uh, uh, nice uh, um, um, support to the Trashtra in his old age. But instead of uh, taking advantage of this uh, situation to practice uh, spiritual life, um, which is the prime necessity for every human being at least, the Trashtra was completely neglectful of this uh, uh, spiritual reality. And he was simply living a materialistic life. 
And that is what Vidura is pointing out. This materialistic life is very, very dangerous. Why is it dangerous? Because suddenly death will come and then everything will be uh, taken away. Krishna warns us of this in the Bhagavad Gita. Mrityu sarva haras chaham. As in death I come and take away everything that one may have. Uh, in the course of living in this body, in this life, we uh, try to secure ourselves in so many material ways. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, people work hard and try to earn money and build a good bank balance. So, in my old age, when I am not able to work and earn money, and then I have sufficient savings to take care of myself. Then they have uh, property. They have a nice house, my own house. Yeah. And then they have uh, built a network of relatives, friends, and uh, so many uh, well-wishers. Yeah. And they think that in this network of uh, so many people, uh, they can live very nicely, very happily, very comfortably, a very secure way. But as Srila Prabhupada points out in this purport, no father, no friend, no brother, no state, no one else can protect a person who is not protected by the Supreme God. So ultimately, protection is only possible to be given by the Supreme God. Now, Krishna declares in the Bhagavad Gita that he is the topmost well-wisher of every living being. Surudam Sarva Bhutana. Now, if Krishna is the topmost well-wisher, why would he not protect the living being or any person of whom he is claiming in the Bhagavad Gita? I am your topmost well-wisher. I am the topmost well-wisher of everyone. Then why would Krishna not give protection? Because Prabhupada is telling, if one is not protected by Supreme Lord, then no one else can protect him. So why would Krishna not protect us? So we have to understand <clears throat> that Krishna's protection is according to a certain reality, uh, spiritual reality, which we first of all have to accept and understand and actually live on the foundation or understanding of the spiritual reality. First of all, uh, we should understand, I am not this body. So this bodily existence is not my real existence. And falsely if I think in terms of body because I want to be independent, because I am forgetful of who I am, because I am forgetful of Krishna, because I am forgetful of my spiritual nature, then that is false existence. So to remind us about this false existence, Krishna has made this arrangement that while we are in this body, whatever minimum basic necessities of this body, Krishna has provided. It is not just that any, uh, human beings are living in a particular material body, even the animals, they are also living. Whatever form of body they may have, whatever uh, uh, condition they may be uh, living, they are being sustained by Krishna. Krishna is present in the Paramat as Paramatma in the heart of uh, all the uh, other living beings, other creatures, other forms of life. As Paramatma, he has entered into everyone's heart. And he is maintaining, he is supporting, he is sustaining. Only he can sustain, nobody else can sustain that life in any body. Only he can sustain. So, he is actually sustaining. But in the human form of life, he has given us developed intelligence to inquire. You see this uh, uh, developed intelligence to inquire is characteristic of human life that we can easily understand. 
when a child is born when it is born immediately as an infant it cannot speak so its language is crying so it uh, uh, asks for whatever it wants simply by crying 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 so the mother being very kind this is also krishna's arrangement that there is a mother to take care of an infant which can't even express itself in its uh, infancy so till it develops its ability to speak and moment the child starts speaking every parent has this experience that the child starts asking so many questions so many questions and sometimes the parents uh, they become uh, very very tired or exasperated that i can't keep on answering question after question uh, so they will tell the child just shut up and sit down i cannot keep on answering everything you will know about it when you grow up now you don't ask all these questions so what parents should understand and unfortunately many times they don't realize that it is the inquisitive nature of this human form of life that is meant for making fundamental inquiries about ourselves about who we are about who is krishna about what is our relationship with krishna so the parents instead of uh, making the child just sit quiet stop inquiry they should encourage the child's inquisitive nature to make the child think about and ask fundamental questions who am i who is krishna what is my relationship what is the goal of life why have i taken birth in this world so they should actually uh, encourage this inquisitiveness and asking questions now mind you this inquisitive uh, nature of asking questions is not limited to some children who are born in some very nice family who are supposedly very very intelligent no even a child born in a slum apparently born in very very uh, poor conditions not so good conditions even that child will be inquisitive to be asking the similar questions uh, so it is not uh, anything uh, Uh, only for uh, this inquisitive way of asking questions not limited to only some uh, mm, uh, very intelligent kids no it is for every child every human being it is meant for every human being please note that animals and lower uh, creatures you know we think that uh, they are dumb and they're foolish no they have also got the ability to ask questions but because they don't have developed consciousness their questions are limited to uh asking where is food where is shelter where is some uh, facility for some sense pleasure uh, where is some security eating sleeping mating defending these are the only range of activities for all lower creatures whether they are infants or they are grown up or they are old or they are uh, powerful or they are strong or they are weak whatever species whatever uh, type of creature some human species are all limited to this range of four kinds of activities so human being has got a fifth activity that is called dharma that is called uh, inquiring about a uh, spiritual subject matter brahma jignas and the parents should encourage the child to inquire about the spiritual subject matter so instead of simply telling some fairy tales to children parents should tell stories Uh, from the uh, scriptures from the mahabharata from the ramayana from the bhagavata about krishna about rama about uh, great devotees 
the child has got the tendency to hear stories so the parent should tell stories from such literature the child has got inquisitiveness about its uh, origin so the parents should actually uh, educate the child about the real origin that you i every one of us belong to krishna krishna is our source that's what krishna teaches in the bhagavad gita ham sarvasya prabhavo see everything that is reality of the truth is explained in the vedic literature but in a concise way krishna is explaining that in the bhagavad gita so if the parents themselves are not aware of these realities then how can they educate the child So Prahlad Maharaj says that unfortunately in this material world because of a materialistic way of life materialistic people they do not know that their prime self interest is Krishna or Vishnu na te viduhu swartha gatim hi Vishnu durashaya ye bahirartama ninaha because they have got this materialistic attitude of life they are hoping against hope to enjoy life in a materialistic way bahiratthamanina they have accepted this material world to be all in all they are totally oblivious of the fact that this material world is simply a temporary uh, creation for a higher purpose and andhai phande upaniyamana and unfortunately Uh, most people they follow a leader and the followers and the leaders both are blind the blind leading the blind that is material way of life materialistic way of life uh, blind leaders uh, leading other blind people so if somebody is blind how can they lead uh, anybody else they themselves do not know the 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 proper way so unfortunately this is the situation just like parents instead of encouraging the child to inquire or uh, use its inquisitive nature to inquire about uh, uh, spiritual subject matter they may at best uh, uh, inform the child or give the child education or knowledge about some material uh, uh, facts of course that is also necessary for living in this world but that's a very 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 small portion of what education or what training or what culture should be imparted to a child or to anybody and the spiritual reality is the absolute necessity is the ultimate necessity for everyone so that is lost in a materialistic civilization so prahlad maharaj while instructing uh, his classmates he is telling that uh, people are completely in ignorance being carried away by the prospect of uh, sense enjoyment and because of that they have accepted uh, a blind leader and they are being led misled not led properly they are being misled into ultimate failure that is hap- that is happening when death comes and death is definitely going to come even though we all know just like uh, uh, vidura is pointing out the trash can we're forgetting that all your uh, uh, your well wishers your father your brother everyone is dead your sons grandsons have been dead and gone you think you're going to live forever don't forget that you are also going to die and what preparation have you made for this death that is one very important consideration for a intelligent person that uh, one has to prepare for this death death means change of body even though the spirit soul or i don't die or any person doesn't die but the change of body is very very critical because if we miss this opportunity to change our body from another material body to our original spiritual body or spiritual form 
this human form, we can actually prepare ourselves to stop this uh, repetition of accepting material body one after another. No. We are meant to prepare ourselves to give up this material existence and uh, prepare ourselves for uh, our original spiritual existence in a spiritual body uh, full of bliss and knowledge. So that is possible if we practice spiritual life. So Tritrashtra is missing that out completely and Vidura very kindly is going to instruct Tritrashtra and that's why this chapter is entitled Tritrashtra puts home. He gives up this materialistic way of living and he will embrace as we see in the later verses uh, the spiritual uh, way of living whatever balance uh, the time he has to live in this body in order to prepare for death. By the grace of uh, Vidura, the Trafta is uh, fortunate to be reminded at least at the last day of his life in this body. He is uh, fortunate to be having a younger brother like Vidura who is an uh, enlightened soul who has come to save the Trafta. Stop it. Thank you, Hare Krishna.